Hello everybody. Um, I want to talk today about what happens when we place what we would call maybe an interlock set of contacts into different parts inside of our control circuit and just the effect that would have on the circuit. So what I've got here is just a simple start stop station running a contactor to run a motor, right? Uh, and then in addition, I have just for sake of conversation, a temperature switch, which controls a control relay. Now, we know our holding contacts are going to be controlled by our contactor. So how this circuit would normally work, we press the start button, contactor would energize, we would close our holding contacts, we would see that path of current, and our motor would run. Now, what we can do as electricians uh, is we can install basically what we would call an interlock in different parts of the circuit and achieve a different goal. So there's three different parts of the circuit that we're going to talk about. One of them being the stop portion of the circuit. So that's right here, right? So anything we put here in the stop circuit can, is usually typically a safety device. Uh, then we have the start circuit right here, things that will start the motor. And then we have what we call our holding circuit down here. So first of all, let's say I took a set of contacts controlled by CR, which is controlled by this temperature sensing device, and I were to put it in my stop circuit. If I put that set of contacts in my stop circuit, right, when this set of contacts would be open, that would affect the stopping in that it would stop the motor, and it would also affect the starting of the motor. When this is open, I cannot start the motor. So anything in my stop circuit, it affects the stopping. Plus the starting of the motor, right? So usually that's going to be safety devices. Opens up, motor cannot run. Um, next thing we could do is we could take a set of contacts and we can install it in the start circuit. So if we were to put that right here, just in series with the start button, the only thing that this would affect would be the starting of the motor. So when this set of contacts is open, it just prevents us from starting the motor. But if it's already running, it's going to continue to run, right? We don't stop the motor. So whenever we put a set of contacts in the start circuit, it really just affects the starting of the motor, right? If it opens, we can't start the motor, right? Maybe this situation, it has to be warm enough in the room, contacts would close, relay would energize to close, so maybe it has to be warm enough for this motor to run, right? It's a temperature sensitive motor and it can only run when it's warm or vice versa. We could use a normally closed set of contacts. If it gets too cold, you cannot start them, or sorry, if it gets too hot, you cannot start the motor. Temperature rises, open that normally closed set of contacts, right? So we can do different things with that. The last place we could put a set of contacts would be down here in the holding circuit. So when we put a set of contacts in that holding circuit, right, between NEMA 2 and NEMA 3 in parallel with our start button, that can be used for a couple different things. If it were to open when the motor is running, it would stop the motor, it would prevent it from running. However, we could still press the start button and start the motor. It just wouldn't hold. So we can actually call that a little bit of jogging and that if this set of contacts were to open, we can use the start button to jog or bump forward the motor. So all this set of contacts really affects is the holding or the running of the motor. So if we put it in the holding circuit, we just say it affects the running of the motor. We can still start the motor. We can still stop the motor. However, it won't hold or it won't continue to run without some type of user input. Uh, so those are just kind of our three main portions of the control circuit. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.